What's up guys, how's it going? Mike Visuals here and in this video we're going to be discussing what laptop I've been using for the past eight months and why I've been using it, why I've left the MacBook ecosystem and also we're going to be covering a quick speed ramp tutorial at the end. So I guess let's get straight into it. All right, quick disclaimer before we start this video. I got this laptop around eight to ten months ago. I was looking for a new laptop and the Razer Blade came up. Got it, absolutely loved it. And then I reached out to Razer and Nvidia and the partnership kind of seamlessly came together and it just works so well. I use the system. I'll never put anything on this channel that I don't really believe in. So let's get straight into it. So rewind eight months ago, I was looking for a new laptop and I had been completely just, I was just done with the MacBook. Super slow, couldn't handle 4K rendering. It was just so, so laggy in Premiere Pro, After Effects, all of the Adobe programs. I was just craving for something just a lot faster. And obviously I travel a lot, so something portable and lightweight is basically all I needed, but nothing was really quite out there until Razer announced their completely refurbished like Razer Blade series. Jumped on that, took the leap of faith, switched it to Windows, and to be honest, I have not looked back since. And if you checked out my recent video with Razer, the cinematic piece, it was super fun to work on that. And it kind of just gives you a quick background of my daily routine when I'm traveling. Super hectic, and honestly, the Razer Blade can keep up. Even when I'm back at home in the studio, I just simply plug this into the, uh, monitor behind me and I just work off that anyway. I can work off 4K without proxies and it's just a dream. Another thing I love about the Razer Blade is I can completely configure the keyboard lighting layout. So I've got my shortcuts when I'm in Premiere Pro. I've just got all the multimedia keys and unlike the other computers out there, you cannot do that. So it's super easy. It really increases workflow. Workflow is crucial when you're editing a piece or just for any creative. It's super important to have a really nice workflow going on and you just get the, the creative juices going. A big factor to take into account is cost. The cost of the Razer Blade is insanely impressive for what you could be paying for a MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro's got up to around 6K, which is ridiculous. With this, I paid around 3,000 and it's probably like triple the speed of the MacBook Pro. And yeah, you can't really complain. Apples are really overpriced. I'm a huge Adobe fan. I use Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, Photoshop, probably all of the programs. And the laptop at the moment has been handling it great. But by all means, if you're a MacBook user, go with the DaVinci route or Final Cut Pro. They are extremely good in their ecosystems, which Mac favor but Windows stick with the Adobe programs. And also my vlogs around 10 minutes long, edited in 4K, it renders it in about 10 minutes, which is insane, as you can see right now. That was pretty quick. Compared to my MacBook Pro, I'll probably get the beach ball by the time I click render and it just crashes. So yeah, don't miss that at all. So the specs of this guy, spec geeks out there, this one's for you. RTX 270 with max Q. The eighth gen Intel i7 processor with six cores. So another awesome thing about switching to a Windows laptop is you can just configure whatever you want. So I've switched this to a two terabyte internal storage with the Samsung Evo drives and I've pumped it up to around 32 gigs of RAM. So I've maxed it out. It comes at a standard of 16 gig, but I've just doubled that. Windows, super awesome. You can kind of just keep up with the technology these days. Just increase the SSD if you want or the RAM and just stay up to date with everything. So that's another cool thing that you can do with the Razer Blade laptop. All right, time to discuss what display I got for this one. This was the 4K 60 Hertz one. I can actually see my 4K footage in 4K and it's actually touchscreen. It comes in handy. Sometimes I'm on Photoshop or Google Maps, scan to four locations. Coming back to the NVIDIA RTX 270 graphics card in the laptop. It's currently one of the fastest graphics cards you can actually get in a laptop so thin. This thing is so, literally, look like, look at this. But I've definitely been utilizing this graphics card, open up Premiere Pro, After Effects, Lightroom, maybe the occasional Battlefield 5 uh, game now and again. Gotta, gotta put the ray tracing to use, right? Am I right? It can definitely keep up with everything running at the same time. And I'm a big procrastinator, to be honest. George is always having a go at me for that. But less rendering time means less sitting around. Less sitting around means more editing time. So definitely has helped me keep more productive during the day and uh, yeah, less procrastination. I wanna make it clear that the CPU and the GPU 
do completely different things. The CPU, in fact, is sometimes more important than the GPU. The CPU does run a lot of power in these programs like After Effects, Premiere Pro. The GPU is mainly for like rendering, exporting. Those who are kind of like 3D animators, using the GPU for rendering is super fast when using a good graphics card. The CPU is mainly where all the power comes from, from editing, kind of compositing stuff, but the GPU is used for rendering and exporting. All right, bonus tutorial in this video, guys. Speed ramp in. A lot of you have been asking how I do it, and especially in the Razer video, I used it a lot. And on top of those speed ramping shots, I've added third party plugins like RSMB, Denoise. So for shots which are a bit dark or want a bit more motion blur, I had to use those plugins. So this puts a lot of strain on the graphics card. All right, so let's switch angles and get this tutorial started. All right, so let's get straight into this tutorial speed ramping. So I've picked two clips from my recent trip to Singapore. Check out the video if you haven't, it's the last one I posted. But we had this really awesome cinematic sequence like this. I'm just gonna do a new fresh idea but using the same footage. So I've just chose these which have a bit of movement at the end and at the start so you can kind of link these two together and it'll create a nice all in one movement just make sure each speed ramping clip you choose it has some sort of movement at the start or at the end just so you can kind of link them two together and it'll just create a better speed ramping kind of technique so as you can tell as i'm scrolling through the end of this clip i'm tilting the camera up towards the greenery and then i'm planning to switch to this clip with the same movement heading towards those trees but with the same kind of movement as well. So, so these two clips really complement each other nicely once I finish the speed ramping. So the first thing I want to do is actually choose the bit I want. So I'm going to start the clip when the camera is actually moving, trim it to about here and just drag through and I want to speed ramp it at that last two seconds when it starts to tilt up towards the leaves. I'm going to cut it there, the nest. Quick tip, always warp stabilize your clips. It just brings more of a cinematic element to it and more of a professional look just so your clips are all nice and silky smooth. All right, that clip's warp stabilized. Do the exact same thing on the next clip we're gonna be doing. So choose the bit you want and then warp stabilize it. All right, these two clips are warp stabilized. Nest them again so we can apply speed ramping. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is right click the clip you wanna speed ramp, go to the bottom and click show clip keyframes. We wanna choose time remapping and click speed. All right, so this will open up a line below the clip. You wanna scrub to the end of where you wanna start keyframing the speed ramping. All right, so next you wanna click P on the keyboard and that will bring up the keyframing tool. You want to select where you want to begin the keyframing of the speed ramping, and that will bring up two blue toggles. So the one on the right hand side will be where you want the speed ramping to end, and the one on the left hand side will be where you want the speed ramping to start. And either side of these toggles, when you click V on the keyboard, will allow you to go up and down varying the speed. So for this clip, we want the speed ramping to gradually increase, so we're going to adjust the speed on the right hand side after the end point. So I'm going to click V on the keyboard. As you can see over here, as I go over the line, this kind of up and down arrow will appear. And you can drag this up and down. And as you can see, the percentage of the speed will go up or down as I go. So for when doing speed ramping, you want it to be quite drastic. So I aim to go between 500 and 1000% on the speed. So for this shot, I want it to be quite dramatic. So I'm gonna go all the way to 1000. So as you can see, this line will gradually speed up to the point I chose. So now the next step is to gradually decrease the speed of the second clip coming in, having that same movement. So this is the clip, I have the same kind of movement going on. Right click, show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. And I want the speed ramping to start at the very start of the clip. Drag this out to where I want the speed ramping to end, so I want it to be around here. But instead of speed ramping the right hand side, which will gradually speed the clip up, we want the speed ramping to slow the clip down because we want the start to be super fast and then it gradually goes into the speed we want it to be at. So we're gonna to go to the left hand side and gradually speed this up to around a thousand as well. So it's quite dramatic. That looks pretty good. So as you can tell, it speeds up at the start and then goes into the second clip with that same movement but gradually it slows down. But having that really fast paced start really helps achieve the speed ramping effect. And that is the video guys, hope you enjoyed it. A quick speed ramp tutorial, super useful to use and such a great technique to use in all of your cinematic shots. Keeps the whole pace throughout the whole video, keeps the audience engaged and it's just a cool technique to use. So definitely start using speed ramps and let me know what system you're using, if it's a laptop, a desktop, a Mac, 
anything, but Razor Blade, check it out. They're also going to be released in the new Razor Blade Studio Edition, which is aimed at us creators, which is really exciting. So, so I can't wait to get my hands on that one. And also one more thing, I've never asked this, hit the like button if you haven't already, and I guess I'll see you in the next one.